you got in learning how to squat, you got in learning how to uh, bench and clean and jerk and stuff like that, whereas I learned how to do this for like, you know, for a good few years. I learned how to do this first. <laughs> Oh, oh, I should not have a shake weight at home. Uh, <laughs> that help with Kate? traveling? You gotta let it go. Katie, that was Pressure. Paddlers, <laughs> are you ready for Shake Weight the Curl? Hey, everybody. This week we're situating on a couch. No. This, this, <laughs> moving yeah. on up, guys. On up. <laughs> I'm Brian. This is Shao. And hey. today we have our good friends Justin Chi and Sally. What's up, guys? Hi, I'm Justin Chi. I currently paddle for Team DPW in Southern California. The other training that I do is weightlifting and CrossFit Metcons. I'm Sally. I paddle here with Northwind, um, also involved with Team USA, U24, and in Slayers Creek. Uh, for supplemental training, I do CrossFit. Shake weights. <laughs> and shake. <laughs> we both paddled on dieselfish. I was paddling with UC Irvine and I paddled with dieselfish. This is in 2008. Did you yeah. paddle in high school? Yeah, I did. Yeah. For Mountain View. Mountain View. Yeah. I started yeah. off as dragon boat athletes, but they kind of ventured out. I actually think it's pretty interesting that a lot of dragon boaters segue into a lot of like lifting sports. Right? Like a lot of dragon boaters are now getting for CrossFit or powerlifting or like Olympic lifting. Mm -hmm. um, but it's like. I wonder why. Is it because like drag was so strength based that like we had started with supplementing with like simple lifting movements and now it's like oh um, the interest that extended past yeah. drag loading into like more serious lifting. I think that's just part of the demographic though. I feel like there's another part of people that are like I used to drag boat and now I'm like you know training for marathons. I feel like there's also that's that. True. And a lot of climbers now too. Yeah. yeah. I do think it's part of the athlete's journey to say the sports, basketball, football, or baseball or whatnot. They still train in other ways too, outside of the sport. And I think what you two are going through, what I'm going through, what you're going through, is that we're realizing paddling is not enough sometimes. You need to supplement it outside um, yeah. of the water. Um, I mean, you need to do other water sports too, like go on the OC, yeah. you know, spend time on other crafts. Yeah. But you also need to supplement it with strengthening yourself through barbell work or gymnastics, whatever it may be, you know, that type of thing. I think that's the huge, biggest difference between being an athlete and being just a paddler, too. And mm -hmm. I think if you want to take competition seriously, then you actually need those supplements. Yeah, definitely. I mean, after a certain while, one starts to realize that paddling isn't enough, whether it be just going up against elite competition or just experiencing more, but there has to be more to it than mm -hmm. just paddling. Why weightlifting? I think a, a part of the answer is like, we all kind of joined Dragon Boat as like a non-athlete. Definitely. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. What structured workout can we find? And of course the first thing you're going to find is like Monday, backs and by and you know, third chest and try. That's pretty much the first Sounds thing you're right. going to find, right? Yeah. Yeah. Is that how yeah. you guys all started? Because that's for sure how yeah. I started. The, yeah. I remember uh, I started lifting when I was, or when I first joined Davis. I was like a junior. I remember um, trying my first bench. So they were like staying behind me, like giving me the bar, the you know, forty-five pound bar. Like, are you ready? Like, yeah. Woo! <laughs> no, I couldn't pick it back up. I was, like stuck on my chest. I was like, okay, I give up. Oh, no. And then when I first started squatting, I couldn't even do an air squat properly. And now you're getting ready for competition. Yeah, which is crazy. Yeah. yeah and that was just like yeah. five years ago. Yeah. Can I hear too, like, as a female athlete, because. When I was in LA, I literally took every single person to the gym and taught them how to lift. And I remember being really proud of like the girls being like, oh, this is what two plates feel like. And then they would look at guys that look a lot bigger and they're like, but he squats like a plate and a half. Yeah. And so like for, for your, from your perspective, like how did um, training and actually like lifting specifically, how did that help you? How did that change your mindset? Oh yeah, it's definitely very mental. Um, I think it's a lot about, also about like female empowerment where I feel like a lot of girls are scared to go to the gym or they're scared to actually pick up that first weight. But yeah, I think, you know, it's, like a lot of females go into looking like very negative, right? Like, oh, I can't do that. Or I can't just go into a gym and pick up a barbell because it's very manly. Um, 
Yeah, and I think a lot of women still get stuck in that kind of mindset. Um, but I think that's what I love about drag, the drag body community because, um, again, like back to your pocket like gender equality, right? Like, there's no difference. And I think it's great that nowadays a lot of females are getting more into lifting or um, wanting to get better in themselves uh, versus like having someone else push them. Yeah. And being mentally strong in the gym like definitely translates to water too. I don't know because I feel like lifting was so early on in my paddling career. Yeah. Like Davis was when I first started to really enjoy paddling and they were like, you know, you have to be stronger, right? And I saw it training in the water. Like the strength, um, my improvements in the gym um, helped me be a better paddler in the water. How did you get into like training? Training, well I first started off just pure paddling. I thought that's all I really needed. Mm -hmm. But as I got more race experience, I just started noticing that hey, like some of these guys look better, stronger, and they're doing things that are that that I want to do. I also had teammates on the team who were just lifting some massive weights, and I was looking at myself and comparing. I think that's what we generally would do often. We kind of look at someone else, and like like look them up and down, and be like, hey, like I don't know, maybe I can outlift you, or like uh, you're just always curious and wondering how to get to that level or. How to be better than that but just being surrounded by teammates who are really strong and striving to want to be able to do more and perform better really pushed me to start to look and ask questions and research what i could do and i did start off with those kind of bodybuilding splits breaking up monday tuesday wednesday well how i did it actually was i would program my training around one of the big compound movements so like the bench on Monday and then it would be like a deadlift on Tuesday and then squat and then from there after starting off with that movement then I would do some accessory more rep kind of stuff. That's pretty good already. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. But it was, I was like, like Smith and the Oh yeah. Oh, right. oh, yeah. 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 well, just trying to figure out what worked and just uh, kind of battling through that, realizing that doing heavy deadlifts after paddling wasn't very <laughs> cohesive and just yeah. trying to figure that out. That really speaks to belief in yourself. Because sometimes like, you know, for me, I grew up as a scrawny little kid. And when I looked at someone, like you said, who was bigger and stronger, I had that like agency of like, oh, I can do something about that. I can get to that level, right? Versus I think a lot of people were kind of like, oh, like, you know, I don't know, back then Marshall was a really big figure and he was really big. So like, I think a lot of kids are just like, oh, Marshall is just Marshall. You know, so and so is just so and so. But you have that like, you know, feeling in your heart of like, oh, what? How can I get there? And you believe that you can get there. Right? That's funny too, because I, how I started lifting, it didn't really have to do with paddling, but I was overweight, and I just always knew that I can get there too if I have the right equipment, if I have the time, and that type of thing. So that's how I started going to the gym. And uh, you're right, something about just having that that mentality to say like, knowing that you can get there before you're already there, mm -hmm. um, and it goes a long way. Yeah. Yeah. Can you? I have never yeah. asked you this. Yeah. I know you, you've talked about it before here and there, but can you talk a little bit about your journey from like <laughs> feeling like you're overweight? Yeah. And actually, you know, just to be honest, like you probably were, if you felt that way, you probably were overweight. Yeah. So then like what, I don't know, like mentally and just identity wise, like how that, just talk to us, I don't know. Like as an athlete or <clears throat> just in general? Yeah, generally. Um, I just, I, so uh, relating to Dragon Ball, I just always felt that if I was overweight, like I'm not contributing the most to the boat that I can. And also starting with Team at Riverside, I said, I can't make my paddlers do anything that I can't do myself, or at least I don't understand how to do. And I have to practice what I preach. So I think just kind of going through all that and also knowing that I wanted to be more fit, I wanted to be healthy and live a healthier lifestyle, all contributed to my journey and realizing like I can be a better version of me before Elliot Hools said all that. <laughs> you know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, <coughs> the best version yeah, of yourself or whatever. Mm -hmm. I think I really was on that journey to doing that without realizing that, uh, just because I knew um, I felt like I owed so much to the community and the people that I helped and served that unless I was a leader myself by example, um, 
Like I couldn't make them into whatever I wanted. So, so the, what, did you have a goal of like I want to lose a certain yeah, amount so, of weight? Yeah, so so it did. Yeah, it did go from it did go from not wanting to be fat to and, and losing weight. So I'd be like, oh yeah, okay, I start at one eighty pounds going into college. At my highest, I was two hundred something. But going to college, I was like one eighty. I said, okay, I want to get down to one sixty. So went from going from that one eighty to one sixty to like realizing I could be one eighty which I am right now, um, but not fat per se. Like I could be, I could just have more uh, muscle on me, like just muscle to fat ratio. You could play with those things and realizing that the focus shouldn't be on weight, but should be on your composition, your body composition. And I think just going back to the whole gender thing, a lot of girls are fed into the system thinking like, I have to lose weight. I have to be 90 pounds, I have to be size zero versus um, Versus, no, like, I just want to be fit, and, mm -hmm. like, you know, it doesn't matter how much I weigh, if, as long as I feel good with how, how I look in my body, and if I can function in a healthy way. Yeah, because he went from, like, or you, you went from, like, I am a certain way I want to lose weight, nowadays some girls are training and they actually gain weight. Oh, for sure. I used to weigh, I used to be underweight. I used to be 115 pounds at this height. For reference, I'm 140 now, so I've gained, like, what, like, 25 pounds through training? Yeah, and that's feel like I'm in the best shape right now than yeah. I ever have been. Yeah. And so how do you deal with that number? Like, Are you proud to say, like, I'm 140? Yeah, definitely. Or and I think a lot of girls need to get over the fact that, like, you know, being a number on the scale is not going to attribute to, like, you know, being fit. Like, being skinny and being fit is, like, very different, right? You can weigh the same and be skinny or, you know, have the same amount of, like, have more muscle and, like, weigh the same. I know some girls are very like, this is my, you know, like I'm lifting and I'm seeing all these benefits from my training, but yet they're like, oh, but I'm also getting a lot of weight, so, or, oh, my arm is looking bigger and stuff like that. So, yeah. That's really hard. I feel like, yeah, yeah, yeah it, it is a hill to get over. Yeah. It is so, hill to get over. so did you actually have those, like, negative things happen to your body, and did you, like, get comfortable with it? And so, like, no, that's not a bad thing, and you redefine it. Or? Yeah, I think a lot of girls go through that initial stage where, you know, once you start training, you're you're going to be putting on muscle, right? Like, you're going to be gaining muscle weight, and even if you don't see it, you're still going to see on the scale. And I think a lot of girls think like, oh crap, like I'm gaining weight, and um, you know, like a, maybe they stop lifting, or I don't know. Um, for me, I feel like um, like it's just an initial hump. And I think mental, like mentality-wise, you need to understand that, like how you feel. Like if I feel good and my numbers are going up, you have to be okay with that. Yeah. Not again, like even even like if the scale is going up for me now, and I feel like I'm in the best shape of my life, like that, you know, that's just like I don't care about the number on the scale. Can you see her flex for a sec. Okay, so then I think we all had our journey of like, okay, Dragon Boat was this gateway for us to like try different things, and we all really enjoyed that. You guys actually went out and like competed in other sports. Was there were there things that you guys learned from the other sports? I've competed in CrossFit competitions. Was well, just a, a little test for myself and, and a, a break away from. Um, I'm doing my first team comp in a couple weeks, and then I'll be doing. Um, <laughs> I'll be doing. We don't work on bike or comp, by the way. <laughs> and then I'm doing a partner competition in November. I think it pushes you mentally because you can't hide yourself. It's the same in like I used to do like a lot of six man competitions too, and um, like I've done like one man competitions. But it's just like the thing is in Dragon Boat, you have like 19 other people supporting you. And like it costs a competition. You're like, you're even at a team comp. You're everyone's doing a movement by themselves. So, like, it's obvious to see like where your weaknesses are. Versus dragon boat, it's like that's why people tell you like, oh, you should hop on a one man, right? You know what you can work on right away. Um, versus like in crossfit, six man, you know what you're pulling, um, and that kind of humbles you to say, oh my gosh, maybe I'm not as good as I really am, right? Um, and you you really see yourself compared to like other people. I know that's like not really the right mentality, but like it kind of humbles you too. 
Yeah, and I think that's why we do comps, right? We want to see where we stack up. It seems like we all have different other training regimens. Like I know you love to power lift. You were you you do weightlifting, and Sally has experience in CrossFit, and I'm just curious how, what kind of training into that you do on the side, and how you apply it with power. Yeah, I was just gonna ask that too. Yeah, because <laughs> I was like. It's a struggle that I've been going through, um, realizing like I cannot realistically peak for a powerlifting meet and mm -hmm. peak for a dragon mm -hmm. competition at the same time. Like, I mean, you can maintain a certain level of strength and you can maybe paddle decently, but never at the same time can you be 100% at both, I think. I agree. Mm -hmm. and it's paddling season, it's paddling season. Yeah. So um, I just have to lay back with the lifting a little. Like I don't focus so much on peaking so much as I do on um, what are some imbalances and things that I didn't get a chance to work on during the powerlifting season. Um, I lay off of deadlifting a lot too, uh, just because I'm like, there's no way I'm gonna deadlift this like 500 pounds and then go to practice and <laughs> go to Melfit and go to practice again. <laughs> you know, like we're not getting any younger. <laughs> Kind of sucks. Yeah. Like I can't believe. Like I, can, I actually feel injuries. Like, <laughs> no, I'm really younger. For me, I actually started CrossFit back in like 2014 when I wanted to start training for Italy Club Cruise when I was on CAU, and I realized like the explosiveness, uh, the explosive movements in CrossFit really helped me with the explosive movements of dragon boating. Um, and then I was like, okay, well after Italy, I'm just gonna quit, and I actually did. <laughs> but um, I realized like the benefits of it, and I came back to it like like mid-2015-ish. And how I train is, again, like paneling season, paneling season. Um, and I know right now, like my cross comes like right in the middle of like Dragon Boat. Um, but it's all about like priorities, right? Like I still prioritize Dragon Boat. I don't do cross it like a day or two days leading up to like practices, because I know like this workout's gonna wreck my body and I wanna do well like Dragon Boat practice. Or like leaning up to a race, uh, like a Dragon Boat race, right? Like I'm gonna lay off all my boots. I'm not going to do anything heavy. Or I only go into like a CrossFit class knowing that it's like cardio movements versus like heavy lifting movements. Yeah, I do want to add to that too. Um, uh, I think it is a little different with powerlifting um, in the sense that yeah. it's just strictly strength. Like Definitely. how much can you lift? And um, I think you can get away with doing more CrossFit style workouts and working around different things For during sure. the season to help supplement your paddling as opposed to uh, powerlifting. So like with my girlfriend, she has a meet coming up in, I think it's in October, but we just realized like there's no way she can race and prepare for that competition. So we just basically have to make the decision. If anything, what training for powerlifting or just any type of competition like that has taught me is everything is a process. And even with dragon boning, so like you can't just go out and do 500 meters like RP 10 like all the time and expect you to like race your best come race day you know there has to be a system there has to be kind of like a program that gears you for it and kind of peaks you towards it just like with lifting um, but I think the issue is a lot of paddlers kind of expect all right today we have to have our best piece and then Thursday we have to have our best piece on Saturday and then we just expect it all the time without realizing there's processes and steps that need to be taken first just like with weightlifting just like with powerlifting, just like with CrossFit or any, any other sport. Yeah, that actually took me a long time to learn and I didn't really start learning until like I was talking to you about training this year. Like, this coach was like, there are certain days where I push my athletes and like, today is your 100% day. Then like this is actual competition, go all out and I'm going to make a workout that can push you there. But most days he says, like, I'm telling my athletes to go 85%. And like, that's something that I didn't learn for such a long time. And it's like every day you go into the weight room, look at the workout, how fast can I be? Or look at the weight, and I, or look at the lift, and I'm like, how, how much can I lift today? Whereas it wasn't until I was actually prepping for my, um, for, for trying to go to a meet, where I was like, oh yeah, I can't test a three rep max every single day. Right. I actually have to go like, you know, sub max for most of the training, and then, and then try to max on the rest of it. One huge consideration is recovery. You want to live to lift another day, or live to paddle another day. I mean, it looks like that's yeah, great. Right that's great. Yeah. Like, you know, like, Jesus. Just, Jesus. As, as you lift more and you start to understand how that affects your body, you yeah. realize that you're not able to lift maximal 
every single day and continue that moving forward. So yeah, I, I tell myself that all the time or when people ask me for certain workouts, like, well, why aren't you lifting more or why aren't you pushing harder? Why are you being a bitch? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And basically, it's just I want to I wanna come back in tomorrow and give it as much as I can and, and not have to wake up in the morning broken and even consider not even going to the gym or out on the water. And I think a lot of people who are like just getting into lifting or whatever might be like, no, Sean, like, what are you talking about? Every day I'm lifting, I'm making gains, I'm making PRs and improvements. Mm -hmm. But that's because as a new athlete, your body's going to like respond to any type of stress that you get. Yeah. So you will always have improvements, like even up to a year maybe, you know, just like just off of new gains. Uh, but you'll find after a certain point that you'll go through what we've all went through. And you'll be like, that I think it's a good time for a break, though, yeah? Yeah, sure. Alright. Hi, I'm Sally, and you're listening to Paddlers Are You Ready? Hi, I'm Justin Chi from Southern California, and you're listening to Paddlers Are You Ready? And we're back! How was your dump? <laughs> Glorious. <laughs> yeah, how was your dump, Sally? <laughs> <laughs> you guys have any like special training then that you're gonna do for uh, for the upcoming workout? So you your team's coming up. Yes. Yeah, we're gonna be there. Team DPW. We are going to Lake Merritt. Shout out to Team DPW from SoCal. Yeah, we're just in practice right now because I'm up here right now in San Francisco. Any special training? Special training. I'm just doing the same thing that I've been doing. Uh, generally, I go to the gym at least four times a week with one rest day, and four times. And I'm talking about weekdays, so generally Monday to Thursday, rest Friday. And I have been doing a lot of squats, so squatting often, and primarily weightlifting training. So snatch and clean and jerk, like like Xiao, uh, doing a lot of that, uh, and also mixing in a lot of metcons, so CrossFit workouts. Uh, mostly because I like to program interval style, so things in the two two minute spectrum, doing stuff like that and that type of training. I think the way I've been training has been pretty effective. Yeah. Um, I do think I need some more time on the water. So Sundays I've been doing a lot more OC one training. There's two dragon boat practices. Um, I can't make Sundays, so I do my own OC one training in the morning. And I'll just do my own pieces. And I think it's pretty effective that way because I get my team training, I get my land training, and I get my OC1 training. Northwind, you guys do try to focus on land training, yeah? Or like make people, or we tell do. people like, we recommend do. like... Yeah, we recommend a lot of strength training. Yeah. So um, even like in the beginning, I think, beginning this year we had like a, a totals contest. So we got split up into like four teams and then mm -hmm. uh, your scores are the culmination of like everyone's big three lifts, like bench, squat, deadlift. That's pretty cool because you have your entire team kind of doing the same type of training. Yeah, definitely. But it seems like a lot of No one should be a mouse after it though, right? That's, that's just cheating. <laughs> I mean, I feel like a lot of guys <laughs> just that like deadlifting, benching, squatting with like, the same numbers now. Like yeah. we have so many guys on our team squatting over like 400 pounds, right? Like four plates, it's insane. Yeah, I was going to say like four plates is like the new like <laughs> Five places in the new four. It yeah, is. Yeah, it's pretty scary. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty scary. Yeah. yeah, that comp was really hard for me as a crossfitter because I don't put up big numbers um, since I'm just like so metcon based now. Yeah. yeah. No, I do think that touches on something though, where um, as we all progress as athletes and as your team starts to kind of realize what worked and didn't, our team is the same. There'll probably be more of a shift. A shift where we'll be like more strength training in the off season, yes. really getting Definitely. numbers up so that you have that base strength, and then as the season progresses, more metcon days or more interval days. That's for sure. And where you're not focusing on the strength as much, and I think that's what we're all discovering right now. Yep. Just kind of cool. Dude, I really, <coughs> I really want to get a weightlifting or powerlifting competition going on yes. at Lake Merced. Yeah. That how cool that would be insane. How cool yeah. would that be? Like that's. Like imagine inviting all the teams and just yeah. like that would be so cool. That would be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and then there could be like a powerlifting section and then yeah. a weightlifting section too. Gosh, yeah. I, I thought of yeah. that because my 
friends that did that for like cancer basically. Mm. Wow. Like they had a the side for powerlifting, and they had a side for weightlifting. Yeah. I was like, why can't we do this for the Dragon Ball community yeah. and then have some greater cause as well, you know? Mm. Or like give the proceeds to some youth team or you know, whatever. Like yeah. whatever cause. That'd be awesome. Thing. Yeah. I wonder, um, so like you guys have talked earlier too about prioritizing and being like, you know, I am a CrossFit athlete, but yet to me, I prioritize my, my Dragon Ball career. So why is that? Like, cause you could easily be like, oh, I'm a Dragon Boat athlete, but I'm gonna prioritize CrossFit. Um, for me, I'm really involved in the community. So I'm still doing a lot of Team USA. I'm running the U24 program. I'm helping run this league at Creek. You know, I want to see the community thrive. Uh, Dragon Boat's done a lot for me, like as an athlete, and I would love to see like youth rise up to that. Right? Like, I think I had a really good experience also with like um, CAU and seeing. Um, international competition, and I think a lot of athletes haven't gotten those opportunities yet, so I want to bring that to them. And I think, you know, even as a youth coach, right, or as someone who's really well for inclusion, if you're not the one paddling, I think it's really hard for people to respect you. Like Sally said, the sport has done a lot for me as an individual, basically changed my life, uh, made me a better person, and it's, 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 it's just a love. I just love the sport. It's, it's, uh, it keeps me going. So, yeah. what about you? <laughs> like, I feel like you've always yeah. been involved in Dragon Ball as long as I can remember. Yeah. Like, yeah. I. Uh, that's very interesting that you asked me because if you asked me, say, two years ago, I would have like, the moment that I get my team on board to becoming one of the best teams, I'm out. Like if I can if I can set up a good system in place where my I know my team is going to succeed because they know what to do now, I'm I'm out. But if you ask me now, which you are asking me, I'm like no, I want to compete. Like now that we have gotten some of our some of our paddlers to be pretty darn good paddlers, I'm looking at them and I'm like, dude, I want to I want to get back into it. I want to I want to show that I can I can be in it too, and I want to just finish off my career at the right place. So me and Luke started off racing in the worlds when we were in high school, so, and me and him wants to get back to that. Just like what Sally and she were saying, just how much grind boating has done for me as a person, and just developed my character and my leadership and my abilities as an athlete. Um, but it's never been like a decision of mine to be like, oh, I'm going to come back to grind boating. What I found very unique about my journey is that it's always found a way to come back into my life, like wherever I am. So it's like, after Riverside, like I took a break just because I needed, um, I need to focus on myself and then, but all of a sudden, you know, I'm back here again, DW doing all these things and it's just crazy, I think, understanding that I think drawing building is always going to be a part of me and what I do and um, I want to uh, help other people um, kind of realize that same journey and just get back to the community. And I was going to add too that like it is the people that you train with. In weightlifting, you're just doing it by yourself. And yeah, you can have training partners and whatnot, but th there is something different to say, dude, these people I know have my back, and so therefore I must have theirs. Yeah, that's and, a huge part. Yeah. I feel like my first memory of that was like, um, I think college, my last, very last college cup. And I remember like, we all have a mentality like, oh my gosh, like, UC Davis, we've never won College Cup, and I think there was one day where like we just took it, like our first boat just took it together, and we like put our foot down. Literally, twenty people gave up like our we gave up our social lives to basically do drag boat to train for drag boat, and like granted we didn't place first, um, but we got third, and that's the furthest we've ever gotten for a College Cup. Mm -hmm. And that feeling of like oh my gosh, that feeling of accomplishment where twenty people have worked their butts off like in the gym. Um, nutrition wise, um, just to, you know, even place third was so overwhelmingly satisfying. Yeah. And like moved on to bigger competition, right? When this day you, um, we spent three years training for that. And that was the first time where I felt like, wow, this is what I feel like to be an actual athlete. Um, you know, and a lot of people were doing off water training um, in order to supplement their on water training. 
and you know we were driving it's like the sacrifice that your teammates made made a huge impact on yourself because you're asking yourself what can I put in just kind of thinking back about like why like you come back to dragon building is I think it's just because I feel I have a lot more to do mm -hmm. um, I feel like my abilities as a coach and as a person to uh, instill lessons onto others and learn from others isn't done yet. And until I'm a physical therapist, until I'm able to treat people and help people in the community, get them to understand that you guys are athletes too, and you should tr respect your bodies with the same standards, um, until I get to there, uh, I don't see myself stopping anytime soon. There's also the idea of flow um, and in competition that I think is different in driving. So I've hit this like mental state of flow once in dragon loading and it was my last race or second to last race with LA where during the race I literally like that race lasted five minutes in my head. Even though it was like you know two minutes and nine seconds. It was like it just lasted forever in my head and I remember it wasn't the stroke. It wasn't the I remember seeing the water moving and I remember seeing flashbacks of the training, seeing flashbacks of the people, and like that's my focus, and just time slowed down. And I've hit flow another time when I was lifting, and it was because I, I was coming back from injury, and I hurt myself during deadlifts. So I was staring down this, um, this, these three plates on, on, the, on the bar, and I was just like, this is the first time that I'm hitting this weight again. And I told myself before I lifted it, I was like, "There's, I could die and I will still lift this weight. There's nothing that's gonna stop me. And I lifted that weight and it just like, time just stopped at that point. And I just like yelled this primal yell and the whole gym paused and looked at me. And, and for that, from that moment, for the next five minutes, I literally felt like I just killed somebody. And so I hit flow those t two times and it is different um, because one time I felt like time slowed down. The other time I felt like time just completely stopped and nothing mattered in, around me. And the the flow when I that I hit in a, on a dragon boat was different because that was a flow that I shared with other people. That I knew other people were having similar experiences as it, that that I was, or at least that I imagined them to be. Right. Um, and and that flow state was more satisfying than the other one too. Flow within a dragon boat, when you do share it with 19 other people, is really, really powerful. When and everyone's that's on doing. the same page, the boat is flying, you're giving it your all, but it feels effortless. Mm -hmm. Flow. Yeah. The greatest feeling. It really is. Yeah. It's yeah. like a drug, right? And we all come back. As I mean, and you've talked about that too. I think one of your goals kind of is like, if you can get other people yes. to experience that flow. Mm -hmm. experience that. I know, I, I felt that. Uh, in my last race with Will mm -hmm. uh, as a senior at, at Long Beach, because like we just realized like this is literally our last time we're gonna race together. Mm -hmm. and we've had such a disappointing season um, because of Fred and then with Galileo. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. No, like, and but it was just the best race ever. Yeah. Yeah. And just like Sally said too, the results didn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it well, it mattered to me. The crazy, <laughs> well, the crazy part is like it was. We were cruising, like we were just like went to the competition that race. What kind of states do you guys hit in a CrossFit competition? I go to some scary places in Thailand. Right, I was gonna ask you too. Like, like, how I don't, I don't know. Really imagine. Like, wow. But I don't know if like it helps or not. You know. What? I, I what was, do you mean? Like, just like nothing else matters. Like I have to pick this. Yeah. Up. Like. Oh yeah. Like, and I felt like that. Like I actually I bombed out in competition on my bench. It was just like the most miserable experience ever. But in hindsight, it's like, whatever. Like, <laughs> I'm still I'm alive. Like, I'm having a great time right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, right, but you were saying, like, like you get to you, some dark places yeah. in powerlifting. Yeah, you just have to zone everything out mm -hmm. and pick it up. Yeah. Just know that you can. And I mean, I'm starting to feel it. I've got that flow right now. I always feel like such a an asshole like when I'm in that zone because mm -hmm. like no one can say anything to me to grab me. I'm just like, like don't talk to me right now. Yeah. Like, even if it's stiff me, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, like yeah, don't. <laughs> like once you're in that rhythm, like sometimes yeah. for me, I'll just pace around. Yeah. Around the gym, like 
just just aimlessly and if someone just like asked me something I basically ignore them I'm just yeah. like walking around like taking a little stroll but it's like a, a deep thought go to the bar and do a lift finish the lift and I'll just continue walking around <laughs> and just kind of walk it off yeah so flow within a dragon boat just seems so much more supportive Definitely. Um, it's it's, it's a little more me. elusive too yeah because you true. have to get all 20 yeah. people in that state mm -hmm. I wonder what the steersman thinks yeah, but I think that's a really important part because in order to achieve flow on a dragon boat, you cannot have any doubts for anyone else. Mm -hmm. um, in order to hit flow for your weightlifting or whatever competition, you just not you just need to not have doubt for yourself. But on a dragon boat, the moment you have doubt for even one of your teammates, it just goes to dark places, you know, like, mm -hmm. oh man, what if this person was on time, or what if this person was a little bit lighter, or what if this person trained a little harder? Like, that just can eat you up. So, like, I do want to, like, go back to that point of, like, flow state in a dragon boat is that much more elusive, and that's why we all chase it. Because when we see those teammates that are like, dude, you have my back, and I'll have yours, that's just so much more powerful than mine. I want to go kill someone and lift this weight. Sure. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Thank you guys for listening. I hope you guys uh, got some value from today's episode and learned something about what it means to train outside of dragon boating and training for dragon boating as well. If you liked what you saw today, comment and subscribe and like our video and uh, visit our page at paddlersareyouready.wordpress.com for more. Thank you for the support, guys! Yay. Shout out to Northwind!